Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Pat O'Brien, Ruth Warwick, and Chester Morris in The Navy Comes Through. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. The lifeline of the United Nations is a string of plodding ships that carry the weapons of war across the brilliant blue of the Pacific and through the murky fog of the North Atlantic. The ships of the Merchant Marine. A torpedo strikes and a gallant vessel may go down. But the submarine that murdered her may die too because the Merchant Marine has fangs of its own. And tonight's play, The Navy Comes Through, is the story of the deadly stingers on those merchant ships, the Navy gun crews, who strike back at the wolf packs of the sea. RKO made the picture, and tonight we have Pat O'Brien in his original role, co-starring with the lovely Ruth Warwick and Chester Morris. A lot of activity goes on behind the scenes here in the Lux Radio Theater before one of these productions is ready for the microphone. First, we must secure the right star, the kind we have tonight. And then comes hour after hour of rehearsal. But the power behind all that activity is you. You make all these plays possible by buying Lux Flakes. And you can't lose because our product has proved its worth. And as a bonus, your whole family has reserved seats in the Lux Radio Theater. We always hope for a favorable verdict on our plays. We know we'll get one on Lux Flakes. Now here's the curtain for the first act that the Navy comes through. Starring Pat O'Brien as Mike Mallory, Ruth Warwick as Myra Mallory, and Chester Morris as Tom Sands. Like huge black ghosts, they slip from their moorings in the dead of night and turn their bows to the open sea. Slowly they move, wallowing deep in the heavy waves. For these are the ships of the merchant marine, and their great bellies are swollen with the instruments of war. Food for the people of the world, and food for the guns of the United Nations. Here below are stored planes and tanks, shells and bombs, oil and TNT, while above on the decks face the men of the United States Navy, watchdogs of the convoy, scanning the dark sea for the telltale ripple of the U-boat's periscope. They're short on gold braid, these men who sail with the merchant marine, but they're long on courage, for facing the decks they walk on dynamite. One of these men is Michael Mallory, Chief Gunner's mate, United States Navy. I guess it's all right to tell this story. Nowadays, you can pick up a newspaper and read stuff like it most every day. You know, convoy reported attack, U-boat reported sunk in the North Atlantic, you know, stuff like that. Well, the fellows I work with are the fellows that do the reporting and the fighting. So we kind of know it from the inside. However, the beginning of the story you'll find only in the Navy records. That was back in September 1940, down in Washington, D.C. I was in Washington at the time. The Navy Court of Inquiry was in session. They called me as a witness. The Court of Inquiry, well, that's just like a civil court, only the judge and the jury down there, the United States Navy. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, sir, have you got? I do. State your name, rate, and station. Michael Mallory, Chief Gun is my temporary duty Navy Department. You were on duty aboard the USS Bayonne on April 9th, 1940, when a gun exploded in the forward turret? Yes, sir. You inspected this particular gun prior to the target practice, which led to the explosion? I examined the gun at 10.20 a.m., two hours and 40 minutes before target practice. Was it in good condition? No. I found the salvo latch improperly assembled. To whom did you report this? The assistant gunner of the officer. Who was that officer? Lieutenant Thomas Sands. Did Mr. Sands have the salvo latch repaired? I don't know, sir. He said he'd attend to it, but... The explosion occurred on the first salvo. Confine your testimony to the facts, Mallory, and avoid conclusions. Aye, aye, sir. Mr. Sands, do you have any questions? No questions, sir. Very good, Mallory. That's all. Aye, aye, sir. Lieutenant Sands, will you take a stand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, sir, help you, God? I do. State your name, rank, and station. Thomas L. Sands, Lieutenant, United States Navy, temporary duty, Navy Department, sir. You were assistant gunnery officer on the ship in question at the time mentioned? I was, sir. Did Chief Gunner's mate Mallory report to you the condition of the salvo latch on one of the guns in the forward turret? Yes, sir. What action did you take? 
I ordered the turret captain to repair the salvo lamp, sir. Did he do so? Yes, sir. I supervised the repairs personally. And how do you account for the fact that this particular gun backfired on the first salvo, causing an explosion in the turret? I can't account for it, sir. Is there anyone who can corroborate your statement that you had that salvo lance repaired? No, sir. Why not? The men who repaired it are dead. Yes, that was it. They were dead. Three of my friends were dead because somebody made a mistake. The trial didn't last long. They don't like mistakes in the Navy. When it was over, there was a girl waiting for Sands out in the corridor. Her name was Myra. Myra Mallory, my sister. Myra, you shouldn't have come here. What happened? What did they say in there? I, uh, I'm resigning my commission, Myra. Oh, you can't. It, it's your whole life, Tom. Well, there wasn't any way to clear myself, so there's nothing else for me to do. What else could I do? But it wasn't your fault. Well, it was my responsibility. And in the Navy, that's the only thing that counts. Tom, what are you going to do? Well, I don't know exactly yet, but there's one thing I'm sure of. I'm going to get as far away from the Navy as possible. And what about... Us, Tom, you and me. Well, Myra, I'm afraid any future we might have had blew up with that gun tow. You mean your career blew up? I didn't fall in love with a commission. I'm not in the Navy. I'm just a nurse who fell in love with her patient. Darling, there's no gold braid on a hospital nightgown. Yes, I, I, I know, Myra. Oh, Tom, why did this have to happen to you? Well, you'd better ask your brother that. Yes, but I can answer it, too. Yes, I guess you can. Goodbye, Myra. Tom, wait. I want to talk to you. Tom! No, let him go. I hope you're satisfied, Mike. If you hadn't testified against him, he wouldn't have had to resign. Now, look, honey. Look. I'd have had to testify against him if it were my own father. Strictly routine. You never did have any use for him, did you? Well, all right, I didn't. I didn't like him the first time I saw him. I liked him less when he started hanging around with you. I know. The old Navy man's prejudice against the enlisted man's sister and the commissioned officer. No. The old Navy man's prejudice against seeing friends dragged out of a turret because some two-striper didn't do his job. He did his job. Oh, come on, sis. Let's not fight over it. Finished, and there's nothing you can do about it. Forget him, honey. I'll never forget him. Well, you might as well. You're not going to be seeing him again. Why not? Because he's busted. He's out of a job. And who's going to give him one? Oh, Mike, Mike, it isn't safe. Oh, come on, darling. I, I didn't mean to hurt you. But it's the truth. Now, come on. Buck up. It really is the truth. Here. Here's an handkerchief. Come on. Blow. <laughs> Well, like I said, that was in 1940. Right after that, I was sent to the training station in Newport. I was there that Sunday afternoon in December, 1941. I remember the president saying, a date that will live in infamy. So all I could think of was a line of beautiful ships burning and sinking, and the men I know who went down with them. I called Meyer a couple of nights later to say goodbye. I had my orders already, and she had hers too. She'd enlisted with the Naval Reserve as a nurse. Company! Up! At ease, men. Well, you guys have been yelling for action. Now you're going to get it. Join a man who also likes plenty of action. Chief Gunner's mate, Mallory. Company! Benson! Here's your gun crew, Mallory. Thanks, bud. All right, at ease. All right. You meant to report to me at Pier 7, Brooklyn, 11.30 tomorrow night. Got that? All right, let's get some names here and talk up. Farringer. Sampet. Dutson. Kroner. Sands. Bayless. All right, hold it. Never mind it now. I'll get him at the pier. Get right liberty until then. Dismissed. All right. All right. Sands, just a minute. Uh, you want me? Yeah. How'd you get here, Sands? Well, there happens to be a war going on, so I enlisted. That's great. Got the whole Navy to pick from. Why'd you have to show up in my outfit? Oh, it's just a little matter of obeying orders. Well, take a tip from me and apply for a transfer. Now, look, Mallory, if you don't want me in your gun crew, it's up to you to get rid of me. That's Navy regulation. Okay, sailor. I'll see you at Pier 7. If it's Navy regulations you want, you're going to get them. I had a good bunch of boys raring to go. I guess maybe they were hoping for a destroyer, but we drew the Sybil Gray. She was afraid of Small and snow. Well, she was slow, but she was kind of on the rough side, too. When I was getting the boys aboard that night, they were, they were kind of sad about the whole deal. Bayless reporting. All right, Bayless, get aboard next. Fair is you, Chief. Hey, we ain't really sailing on this thing, are we? This is your ship, fella. You call this a ship? 
She ain't fit to be a garbage scout. What'd you expect, a yacht? Well, I figured we rated a cruiser at least. The reserve on those for sailors. Here, wait a minute. Hey, you. See those boxes they're loading there? Yeah. What's it say on them? U.S. Air Corps. Ammunition, 50 caliber. Hey! Yeah, yeah, hey. Well, that's some of the garbage this guy was carrying. Now get aboard. Next. Corona. Get aboard. Come on, Dutch. Please. Not Dutch. How many times have I asked you? Well, you're German, ain't you? I'm not German. I'm American. Okay, Dutch. Please. Get aboard. Next. Dutchman, sir. Never mind this, sir. What's that you're carrying there? That's my... That's my radio set. Is it all right? Yeah, I guess so. Get aboard. Oh, Chief, my... My mother came down and I'd kind of like to... Well, that's... Yeah. Okay. You can stay on the pier for five minutes. Oh, thanks. Thanks a lot. Okay. Mike. Go ahead, sailor. Mike. Well, for the love of... Hello, Mike. Hello, sis. Well, I thought we said our goodbyes on the phone. So did I. But I got my orders. I'm shoving off in the morning myself. Yep. Wouldn't be surprised if we showed up in the same convoy. Oh, yeah? Well, uh, fine. I'll, uh, I'll wait for you. So long, kid. Hey, Mike, you wouldn't be trying to get rid of me, would you? No, but I, uh, I gotta get on board. Hey, Mike, are you expecting a blonde? Oh, me? No. Oh, oh, never mind. It's all right, Mike. I know why you're in such a hurry. What? Oh, Tom. Tom Sands. Tom. Oh, hello, Myra. Oh, Tom, where have you been all these months? Why didn't you write to me? Well, this new outfit's keeping me kind of busy. You're reporting for duty? Sands. Seaman second, reporting, sir. Get aboard, sailor. Yes, sir. Well, so long, Myra. Goodbye, Tom. Mike. Why didn't you tell me? Told you to forget him, didn't I? You still hate him, don't you? Well, I don't love him, that's a sense. But I do, Mike. The Navy gave him the benefit of the doubt. They let him resign and then accepted his enlistment. If they can give him a break, you can. He gets the same break as anyone else, no more, no less. It took a lot of courage for him to enlist as a seaman. There were a lot of gall. The men in that turret were my shipmates. One of them was the best friend I ever had. Goodbye, Maya. Goodbye, Mike. <laughs> Hey, you guys, how do we give you up these bunks? Take any one you want, Samter. Yeah. Only that one's mine, see? Anybody here when we are sailing? Oh, sure, sure. I got a definite. We sail when and if. When they finish loading this and if the engines wake on this tub. Hey, Dudson, what's that contraption you're rigging up? That's a radio, short wave. Yeah, that ain't gonna wake on ship's current. Oh, no? I took care of that. A compensating rear stat for the change in voltage. You fixed it yourself, Dudson? Fix it? Huh, I built it. I've been a radio bug ever since I was a kid. Well, you should have applied for a radio rating. You would be a petty officer. Thanks, but I've got my sights on a commission. Hey, speaking of commissions, this guy Sands we got with us used to be a lieutenant. Only the Navy kicked him out. What for? Oh, nothing much. Just letting a bunch of guys get knocked off in a turret on the Bayonne. Oh, an ex-officer. I don't think I envy him. And well, I hear he's got enough to even show his face around here. Why, I heard that he, he got was... awful good hearing, haven't you, sailor? Yeah. Hello, Sands. I'm just talking about you. Yeah? Something nice, I hope. No, as a matter of fact, it stunk. Thanks. Is it okay with you, Admiral, or do you want to make something out of it? Well, I guess you've got a right to talk. You ain't giving it to me, sailor. Don't get that idea. Get your gear off that bunk. Why? Because it's my bunk. Well, my gear was there an hour ago. Yeah? Well, it's out of there starting right now. Want to make something out of that? <laughs> I guess I have to, don't I? I don't know. Even a rat will stand up and fight when he's cornered. All right, Beringer. Oh, oh, right. Come on, everybody. Take it easy, will you? What's going what on here? here? Cut it out. Do you hear me? Cut it out. What's the matter here? Oh, just a little argument over who gets this buck. Who had his gear in there first? Well, Sands did, but I tossed it out. Well, toss it back in again. I want to tell you something. This goes for all of us. All the fighting on this ship will be done topside. Does everybody understand that? Okay, now we're shoving off any minute. I know you're all disappointed you're not on a battle wagon. But that's the hand they dealt us, and we're going to play it out. Oh, we ain't kicking, Chief. The only thing is, supposing you're out with your sweetie pie and she wants to see your ship, you've got to point out this floating pile of junk. So what? So you tell her. Look, honey, that's where I live. So she says, go home, sailor. Go home and burn your clothes. Guy likes a ship he can be proud of. That's so. Hmm. Well, there's a gun up on deck you can be proud of. And get this. Aft here and above and below, and as far as that gun can toss him, it's all Navy. Forward and midships, it's Merchant Marine. And don't sell those guys short either. It's their job to get this ship across, and it's our job to keep the heinies out of their hair while they're doing it. Now fall in on the deck. On the double! It's 
Sometime that night, along about 12 o'clock, we slipped out of Brooklyn. Destination, Murmansk. Hey, Dutson, will you turn off that homemade jukebox? I'm trying to get some sleep. Can't you get something besides static, kid? That's not static. That's jumble code. Jungle code? No, jumble code. The words are scramble. Scramble? Like it? <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to unscramble them. Been trying to ever since the war started. What's it all about? Well, it's the new way of sending confidential messages. The words are turned back on themselves in the transmitter. Uh-huh. And it comes out double talk. Sure. But somewhere, some guy's receiving this stuff on a special built unscrambler. And it's coming in nice and clear. And somewhere, some guy is talking this way, too, huh? That's right. As plain as you and me are talking now. Well, who is it? Where's it coming from? <laughs> well, if I could unscramble it, I'd know. Maybe a base on shore. Maybe a German sub. Ah, oh, now, there's a cheerful little airful. Go to sleep! Stan. Yes, sir? You can go below. I'll take over the watch. Yes, sir. Just a minute, Sands. Wait a minute. Look. I don't know who started that argument down there, and I don't care. But I want to tell you something for your own good. If you want to get along with those men, be one of them. I'll hold up my hand. And forget the officer and gentleman stuff, see? Yeah, but since you brought it up, I'll tell you something for your own good. In the Navy, you're not an officer because you're a gentleman. You're a gentleman because you're an officer. And you're an officer because you can do any dirty job of work better than any enlisted man on the ship. Mm-hmm. Who told you that, Stella? Oh, a pretty fair sailor by the name of John Paul Jones. Ever hear of him? your message. Standing by for Sable Gray. It's funny how you know sometimes. You're on watch maybe just at dawn. You've got your eyes glued to the water. And as far as you can see, there's nothing but white caps. Just the same, you know. There's something up. Your fingers itch to grab the speaking tube in the old battle station. To hold off. They need their sleep down there. And then brought off the port bow. There's a ripple that you don't like. There it is again. Now she breaks water. She's a submarine. You're looking right down into her gun. Battle station! Battle station! Battle station! Now, in just a moment, Mr. DeMille presents Pat O'Brien, Chester Morris, and Ruth Warwick in Act Two of The Navy Comes Through. But let's listen in on a one-sided telephone conversation. I think it may sound sort of familiar to many mothers. Are you in such a collect call for Bonsville? Hello? Oh, Mums, is that you? Mums, listen, Jeannie's invited me down for the weekend, and I've simply got to have some new undies, a couple of slips and, and panties and a new nightie. But, darling, I can't wait until Christmas. I mean, I simply can't. I know I had a lot, but they're in shreds. I mean, really. Why, I'd die if anybody saw them. But I'm broke, positively, Mom. Well, I just washed them like any old thing. But, Angel, I haven't the faintest idea what could have happened. What? Oh, oh, it does. You mean if I'd been using love? Well, yes, I did rub them. Yes, I know you always use Lux at home, but I, I mean I never saw it. Well, of course I'll buy Lux Flakes, darling, and I'll never touch a cake of soap to them again. You will, darling. Oh, you are an angel. Send them special, will you? Bye. I have a hunch Bad's mother will slip a box of Lux in with those underthings she sends special, just to be sure. Nowadays, we're all thinking about conservation. And it's more than ever important to give all pretty washables Lux Care. Don't risk rubbing. 
or strong soap. Lux Flakes are thrifty, you know, but don't waste them, of course. Use all you need to get rich suds, but no more than you need. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Act Two of The Navy Comes Through, starring Pat O'Brien as Mike Mallory, Ruth Warwick as Myra Mallory, and Chester Morris as Tom Sands. One four-inch naval gun and ten men who don't know when to quit. This is the fighting equipment of a convoy freighter. Now the four-inch gun is blasting away at the steel hide of a German U-boat. Range 3, double O, scale 5 O. Range 3, double O, scale 5 O. Ready, set, fire! All right, boys, don't get excited. No, don't get excited. We got all range, that dirty hiney. Get on that gun. Ready, set, fire! Top 25, scale 5 1. Bayless is hit. He's Corner, hit bad. Corner, take over for Bayless. Top 25, scale 5 1. Top 25, scale 5 1. Bayless! Hey, Bayless! He doesn't get back to your station. But he'll bleed to death. Let him bleed! Get on that gun! Ready, set, well, let me help him. The guy will die. Hey, easy, kid. Mallory's right. This isn't football, you know. There's no time out for injury. Ready, set, fire! Hey, Chief. Look, they're crashed on him. All right. Hold your fire, man. Yahoo! They're running. We sure knocked that hiney out of the box. Yeah, you couldn't even hit an umpire with a pop bottle. Get a load of those really pitching. That's one of our destroyers over there off the bow. Hey, they're dishing us out of that sound. Just when we was getting in the groove. Yeah, one more minute, we could have had them. Don't be handing yourselves any bouquets. If those destroyers hadn't come up, you'd all be shark bait by now. Why? Because you weren't good enough in the pinch, that's why. The only one who acted like he knew what it was all about was Sands here. For the rest of you, to put it mildly. Well, I can't put it mildly. What about Bayless? I don't know. They just took him below. Oh, Mallory, the captain wants to see you. It seems that boy of yours was hurt pretty bad. <laughs> Well, there was nothing much we could do for Bayless. He had a shell fragment in him down deep. It was a job for a surgeon. And that night, we signaled another boat in the convoy. When the surgeon came over the rail in the morning, he had a Navy nurse with him. Hiya, sailor. You might have known you'd show up. I had to come, Mike. Why? Well, it might have been you who was hurt. Yeah, and it might have been him, too. Yes, it might have been him. Miss Mallory? Uh, coming, sir. I'll be seeing you, Mike. Hey, don't cry, fellas. Don't cry. Don't cry. Hey, Chief, who's the dog? Say, she was beautiful, huh? What's the quickest way to get sick? Now, 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 pipe down, you guys. I seen her face. And that's the last you'll see of her on this ship. Oh, oh Chief, have a heart, will you? She's just my type. Well, for your information, she's my sister. <clears throat> Anybody like to play a game of pinochle? Get up on the gun deck. We're having a drill. Sans? Yep. Fans, I'm giving you another station below in the magazine. Oh, till after the medical party leaves. Oh, yeah, Mr. that's Mallory. right. Till after the medical party leaves. Mr. Mallory, uh, Commander Murray's instructions order the boat to return to the hospital ship. For what reason? We can't operate unless this ship lays to. The convoy is proceeding. We are remaining aboard the Civil Grave. Sybil Gray was on her own for the next few days, about six hours behind the convoy. And then early one night, the captain ordered her engine to stop. We lay to drifting in the fall. Silence all ship bells. No talking. I want absolute quiet. Wait a minute. Where are you going? 
You know where I'm going. To Tom. Myra, what about Joe O'Connor? Is he out of your life completely? I don't love Joe O'Connor. I've got to see Tom. Now look, sis. He has a job to do. So have you. We may both be dead in five minutes. You can't stop me now, Mike. You or the whole U.S. Navy. Well, all right. Wait here. You always were. in the line of duty? Way, yes. Look, I'm going to tell you something. He's going to get out of this alive. There's a fellow back in the yard by the name of Joe O'Connor. He wants to marry Myra. He can give her everything that you can. The only thing that stands between them is you. I guess you made that clear enough. by much. No, but they might as well kill me and scare me to death. Oh, my right. I guess we'd better get back to our jobs. Well, I've always felt that my job was kind of looking after you. Yeah? Well, I've got to get back on the watch now. Um, what is it? Still pride? No, my Not exactly. Well, there must be some reason. Well, there is. You, you see, when I was out on the West Coast, I... I met a girl. Oh. oh. Thank you for letting me make such a fool of myself. Good night. Back to your watch, Sam. Well, Mallory, we can stop worrying. The opinion that I'm a heel is now unanimous. Times when a convoy trip is like a ten day pleasure cruise. And then there are times when you run into grief from the night you up anchor. We've been shot at from below. Now that it is habit from the sky. Machine gun stations, machine gun stations. Get on those guns. Come on! Come on, man! Get below. Tom, there's a man here. Yeah, hear what I said? Get below. You can't do anything now. Well, just give me a hand with my cat. Get him under the... Myra, look out! Myra, think over this gun. Okay, Admiral. The girl there, she's pinned under that boom. Keep the gun firing till I get back. Okay, Admiral. Snapper? Yeah. That's him. Here. Did we do all right, Chief? You don't see any honey planes, do you? No, sir. Corner. Here. Barringer. Barringer's over here, Mallory. Barringer got a pretty bad chief. Except one of us? Where's Sands? Sands? Sands isn't here. Did anybody see him? I didn't. He wasn't at his gun. He was supposed to be with Barringer. He wasn't. Mallory, would you come here a minute? How is he? You can see for yourself. Hey, chief. Hi, Barringer. Hey. Get him. Here. You see? Good job, fellow. Yeah. Hey, look, uh, about, uh, about Sands. I, I, 
at you talking. Well, it wasn't at the gun, was it? No, he... He, he went for law. We... Easy, son. Don't try to talk. No. No, no. Look. Here, son. You want me? Yes, I did. A little while ago, we could have used you up there. What's the matter? You ran out. That's what's the matter. Now, wait a minute, kid. Why weren't you at your gun? Well, Berenger can tell you. He... Berenger. I'm afraid he can't. He's dead. What were you going to say, Sands? Nothing. You know, Sands, I'd like your alibis better if somebody lived to back him up. I didn't know Myra had been hurt until later. I figured she must have been hit and crawled below where we found her. She was unconscious. But the surgeon said she'd live, and that afternoon, we had a service on deck for Berenger. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Unto Almighty God, we commend the soul of our comrade departed, and we commit his body to the deep, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection into eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose coming in glorious majesty to judge the world, the sea shall give up her dead. Amen. I tell you, Chief, I did it. I unscrambled the stuff. What's it on the radio now? I'm telling you, Chief, it's German scramble talk. Yeah, but it's coming in clear. They're talking in German right now. What are they saying, Corner? Can't you translate that stuff? I'm getting it. Think. They're finished. Well, what is it? There's a submarine supply ship. Latitude 60, longitude 11, 15. Supply ship in these waters? She's flying a British flag. They're carrying torpedoes. Which way is she proceeding? Northwest at 12 knots to meet with subs. Recognition signal, Sieg, by Blinker. Look, Chief. If we go after, we can hit the supper by morning. Yeah. Let's go, Chief. Sure, we got it. That's up to the merchant marine. I'll ask the captain. You mean you'll tell him? No, I mean I'll ask him. What's your plan, Mr. Mallory, to sink this supply ship? No, sir. No, I'd like to take her over as a prize of war. I see. And who will sail her? Well, if you could spare me enough men for a crew... Well, I could let you have a quartermaster, skeleton crew. With my second officer dead, there's no navigator I can give you. Hmm. See, no navigator, huh? All right, I'll take you up on that. I haven't agreed yet, Mr. Mallory. You realize this is a very dangerous proceeding. Yes, sir. Taking her over would mean crippling sub-action in these waters for weeks, maybe months. Look here, Mr. Mallory. I've had three ships torpedoed under me already. I've swum in burning oil. I've floated ten days on a raft. I've starved and I've frozen. And now what are you asking me to do? Go to war. Yes, sir. I thought I was over draft age. All right. Mr. Reynolds, change course. Head a southwest. Southwest, please, sir. You know, Captain, you should have been in the Navy. Yeah, looks like I am. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille presents Act Three of The Navy Comes Through. Starring Pat O'Brien, Chester Morris, and Ruth Warwick. Haven't you often wished you could read other people's minds? Let's listen in while Nancy Jones spreads the good news that Jim, her soldier husband, is coming home on leave. First, we'll hear what people say to Nancy. Then, right afterwards, what they think. Oh, hello, Dot. I'm getting the house all spruced up. Jim's coming home. Oh, how wonderful, Nancy. Too bad you don't spruce yourself up. Head red as a lobster. Later that day... I'm afraid I'll have to skip my volunteer sewing for a few days, Mrs. Cook. My husband's coming home. Why, how nice. Of course, I understand. But I don't understand a pretty girl like you having such red dishpan hands. Wonder what your husband thinks. And finally, that evening... You're the one, honey. Gosh, you look nice. But say, what folks must think of me when they see those poor, rough little hands? There's no doubt about it. Men feel embarrassed 
feel that people blame them when their wives' hands shout dishpan drudge to the world. Now, why run such a risk? Many tests have proved how easy it is to keep your hands soft and pretty by using Lux for dishes. It's inexpensive, too. Costs less than a penny a day to change ugly dishpan hands to soft, smooth Lux ones. Lux is richer, goes further, actually does up to twice as many dishes as the same weight of other well-known dishwashing soaps. If Nancy were a Lux wife, this is what we'd be likely to hear. You're the one, honey. Gosh, you look nice. Looks as if she never cooked a dinner or washed a dish. A man's proud of a wife like Nancy. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. There'll be a personal interview with our stars after the play. But now the curtain rises on the third act of The Navy Comes Through, starring Pat O'Brien, Chester Morris, and Ruth Warwick. We sighted a supply ship at dawn. Like Kroner had said, she was flying the British flag. That didn't stop us from putting a shot across her bow. Two more in the same place that she hoped to. The British flag came down, a white one went up in its place. She quit without firing a shot. I didn't like it much. I've learned not to trust the Fritzies. Well, I called the men together, gave them the orders for boarding, and then I went below to say goodbye to Meyer. I didn't go in, though. The surgeon told me Sam. It was nice of you to come. They told me you asked for me. How are you, Myra? I guess I'll live. Thanks for, for getting me down here. Who told you I did that? No one, but it couldn't have been anyone else. Well, uh, look, uh, I wish you'd forget about it. Forget? Why? Well, uh, just personal reasons. Just don't mention it, huh? All right. You're a funny guy, Tom. Myra... I'd better say so long to you now. I, I'm i on duty. Yes, I know all about it. The surgeon told me. Oh, look, Tom, I... I just want to tell you something before you go. That... That girl you know, back in the coast. The one you said... Uh, she, Myra. But, well, I'm trying to say it's all right, Tom. I, I've been thinking it over, lying here. And, you know what I think, Tom? What? I think there never was a girl out on the coast. Myra. Goodbye, Tom. Good luck. We boarded the Odin inside an hour. Make fast! Make fast! The captain met me as I came over the rail, handing me his revolver. Well, I can't say I'm pleased to meet you, sir. But we carry a load of high explosives since you caught us by surprise. Yeah, that was the idea, Captain. What are your orders, please? I'm taking this ship as a prize of war. I imagine you need the tonnage. Thanks to our U-boat campaign. And I suppose you want us to go aboard your ship now. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Get your men together. Yes, Tanning! Yes, sir! Go up! Ah, wait a second, uh, as you were. What, Sands? What are you sounding off about? Well, it just occurred to me that this fellow's in an awful hurry to get himself and his men off this ship. So what? Considering we're loaded to the gunnels with torpedoes, I... Well, I thought it might be a good idea to hold these prisoners aboard. You know, just for insurance. I think you got an idea, Sam. Captain, stick around for a while. Tell your men they're going to stay aboard. Amen. We must knock and guide us in here by... Now tell them we're going to batten them down in the hold and keep them there the rest of the voyage. For the rest of the fight, we acht have to be in the Nein. Go oh, right, Captain. Cool off. What's the matter with that man of yours? Here, you step out. What is it? What's the matter? Ask him, Croner. What's this loose, Junge? The st- torpedo. It's my net. He says one of the torpedoes has been set to explode. All right. Time to take you and Sands to it. Everybody else stay put. Get going. <laughs> Well, here it is, Mallory. It's a fuse? I yeah. never saw one like that. Well, it's a detonator, the type used in delayed action bombs. How's it work? Well, this half here is filled with nitric acid, and this part's filled with fulminate. When you screw them together tight, the acid eats through the lead and hits the fulminate and sets off the explosive, you see? Any more of them? Yeah, there are more fuses. But this is the only torpedo that was set to go off. Well, then we can let their crew board the Silver Bay. Take care of it, Sandy. A pleasure, Chief. Okay, you honey. Come on, get over that. Oh, I don't know. You know, Sands, you used a head a while ago. But I want to remind you, I'm still giving the orders around here. I'm sorry, I forgot myself. Oh, that's okay. I got a job for you. I want you to go up on the bridge and navigate us into Belfast. 
You mean you want me to take charge of this ship? Yeah, that's what I said. The civil gray couldn't spare a navigator. Oh, I see. Asking favors, huh? I'm not asking a favor. I'm giving an order. Well, that's a pretty strange order for a CPO to be giving a second-class seaman. It seems to me that's over and above the line of duty. That's, uh, that's a job for a volunteer. All right. Okay, Sands. If it gives you any satisfaction, I'm asking you to volunteer. Well, I'll volunteer, Mallory, but I refuse to sail at a belt. What do you mean? This ship is loaded with torpedoes for enemy submarines. I propose to deliver them. Deliver them? With one of these fuses in each consignment. We can do more damage to the submarine campaign than a whole flotilla of destroyers. My duty to bring this prize into port. Well, I'll relieve you of that responsibility. I refuse to navigate this ship anywhere except after submarines. I'm still giving the orders. Yes, yes, I know. You said that before. Now, uh, now what about the crew? This looks like a volunteer job for them. Yeah, don't worry. I'll vouch for my crew. Uh-huh. Then uh, you like the idea? Yeah, I like it. The only thing I don't like about it is you thought of it. <laughs> All right, go on up on the bridge. Take off. Sybil Gray shoved off to join the Atlantic Patrol. And then we headed the Odin Northwest the same course she'd been before. With Croner doing the talking over the radio, we raised every sub for 100 miles around. And they started flocking toward us. The first was due any minute. I had the boys up on deck getting the last minute order. All right, now, boys, I told each one of you what your job is. Don't rely on your own judgment. You're liable to throw a wrench into the work. All right, Dutch, try him out on that hiney talk. Super fail. Super fail. Oh, murder. It isn't very good, Chief. No, no. But, uh, try that other thing. All together now. Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! Bowie! Cut it out, Scepter. I don't like that Hitler routine. Well, you gotta do a lot of things they don't like to win a war. All right, try it again. All together. Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! Hitler. Uh, that isn't very good either. No, that wasn't very good either. No. All right, think of it. The best thing to do is keep your mouth shut. Periscope is down! A periscope! Hey, Mallory, here comes your first customer. Yeah, there she is. She's right behind us. She's coming up. Now get your men set, Mallory. She'll be alongside in a minute. All right, go ahead, boys. Get to your folks. Corner, you do the talking. Don't worry. Sands, better go up on the bridge. Even with that tiny uniform, that Irish kisser of yours won't fool anyone. Speaking of Irish kissers, ask the man who owns one. Uh, may I, may I suggest, gentlemen, that neither one of you is exactly the conventional German type? All right, all right, I'll get below. <laughs> the sub came along, and came alongside, and we loaded it with torpedoes. One of them with a surprise packaging. When she was ready to leave, Kroner stood at the rail, giving out with a highly salute. Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! The sub shoved off, and then about a half a mile, flew up into a million pieces. One to nothing in favor of us. That night we scored again, and again. Like shooting fish in a rain barrel. We had seven of them, we ran out of torpedoes. We turned and headed for Belfast. Sands. Sands, where are you? Up here, on the gun deck. Well, what do you think you're doing? I'm just inspecting this magazine flood system. You handle the navigation. I'm still running the gun deck. Well, then why don't you run it right? That flood valve is frozen. I'll run it right. Let me at that thing. <clears throat> it is frozen, isn't it? Oh, I thought those square heads were supposed to be efficient. Well, anybody could make a mistake. Yeah. What? Oh, Croner. Yes? Check that overflow pipe. I did. Is it working? It's working. All right, and don't forget to secure that door when you go out. Well, what are you waiting for? Why are you trying to make the crew hate you more each day? What the crew thinks about me doesn't make any particular difference. If you would only make a net... Effort... Now, look, Croner. It's only when you're guilty that you have to try and prove your innocence. And uh, don't forget to secure that door. <laughs> Well, it's getting foreign, that's all I say. Ah, pipe down, Sam. Yeah, well, look at us, look at us. All the fun with those subs and now we're just sitting around doing nothing. It's getting foreign, that's all. That Nazi who flew over us this morning broke the monotony a little. Sure, so what did he do? Not a thing. He thought we were German, that's why. I, I wonder if he did. What do you mean, Croner? I tried to speak to him on the radio. He wouldn't answer. What do you mean? He might have been wise to us. Who knows? Periscope off Port Bow! Hey! <laughs> All right, all right, boys, on the job. Get moving if you're coming alongside. But we have no more torpedoes. You tell him that, Croner. Get rid of him as quick as you can. There he is. See him? All right, never mind the cab. Get ready to go into your act. Come on. Mallory! 
Yeah, yeah, what? He's changing his course, the top side, manning the guns. Battle stations? Battle stations! You merchant marine, get below, you men, get I'll below! Get below nothing. We want to get in the square. On the port! Aye, aye, sir. Full speed ahead. Full speed ahead. Come on, you men, come on! Guns crew ready. All right, let's go. All right, range three, scale five one. Range three, scale five one. Ready! Set! Fire! No change, load. No change, load. Load. Ready! Set! Fire! No change, load. Load. Ready! Set! Fire! Holy! Hey, Mallory! There's another customer to stop it. Okay, I see him. Swing a stern around. Ready! Set! Fire! Nice going, boys. Nice going. Keep up that rhythm. Ready! Set! Fire! All right, keep it going. Keep it going. Chief, Chief, the powder magazine. There's a fire in there. All right, turn on the flood valve. I tell you, Chief, it's frozen. Well, all right, there's another one right outside the powder magazine. Go on, I'll go down and see what's working. Wait, Chief, you can't go down there. Take over. Take over. I'll be right back. Load. Ready. Set. Fire. Well, the inside of that magazine was thick with smoke. I tried to find the valve. I the place with water, and then I... Well, I guess the smoke got me. I couldn't reach the valve. Couldn't even get out of the place. I was down on my knees, choking. Last thing I remember was a fellow coming down the ladder and groping his way toward me through the smoke. He got to the valve, and he turned it on. He got me out of there, too. Don't ask me how. I wouldn't know. The fellow's name was Tom Sands. boys got those subs? Yep, both of them. When we could get our breath again, we lined up on the aft rail to take count of the wounded. The Navy and the Merchant Marine, too. Hey, you Navy guys. Nice pitching in there. Nice pitching yourself, men. All right, boys. Get a load of some real sailors. I guess I knew what I was talking about when I told you not to sell the Merchant Marine short. All right, clear your wounded. Croner, you were hit, weren't you? Well, you don't have to help. Uh, I'm all right, Chief. I'd, I'd like to help. Okay. Nice going, Dutch. Oh, uh, not Dutch. I'm American. Yes, I don't think anybody will ever question that, fellow. Sands. Yes? Well, you certainly saved my hide. As a matter of fact, all of our hides. Well, if you'd done your job right, it wouldn't have been necessary for either one of us to go down in that magazine. I did my job right. Well, the Board of Inquiry wouldn't think so. What? They'd want to know why that valve didn't work. Well, I could tell them. I fixed it myself yesterday. Uh And then how do you account for the fact that it wouldn't work when the magazine caught on fire? Well, I can't account for it. I see. You know, I had the same trouble once myself in a gun turret. Remember? On the Bayonne. Yeah. The Bayonne. That's right. Well, I guess if you could take it, so can I. Oh, you won't have to, Mallory. It just happens I know you repaired that valve. And I'm alive to tell them. Say, wait a minute, sailor. I can't figure out how a guy with guts enough to go down that magazine. Yeah, yeah, I know what it is you want to know. Uh, why I ran away from my post that day, huh? Yeah, that's exactly what I want to know. Uh-huh. Well, why don't you ask your sister? We were picked up that night by the North Atlantic Patrol. Months later, we were back in the U.S., Washington. The Court of Inquiry has reconvened in the case of Thomas L. Sands. They cleared him pretty fast, and then we were both sent up to Newport to go with another outfit. Hello, Lieutenant. Myra. Came to see you off, Tom. Your gold braid is beautiful. Yeah? Well, uh, so are you. <laughs> oh, by the way, that that girl out on the coast. Uh, yeah? I spoke to her. She married a Marine. Oh, fine, <laughs> fine. So I guess I can go right on chasing you, can't I? You want to know something, Mara? You won't have to run very fast. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, halt! That is. All right, men. You joined the Navy to see action? You're going to get it. You're going to serve under a man who likes plenty of action. I know, because I've seen plenty of it with him. Lieutenant Thomas L. Sands. All right. Call it! Hurt! Not a bad looking outfit we've got here, Chief. No, they're all right, but they got funny to learn in a hard way. Oh, you wouldn't admit it if they were perfect. 
course not. What do you want me to do, spoil them? Well, they'll learn all right and a lot more like them. And when they get rolling, they're going to be a tough outfit to stop. Awful tough. You know, uh, there was a pretty fair sailor once by the name of John Paul Jones. He said... Yeah, that... yeah, I know. We've just begun to fight. <laughs> Now, before our stars come back to the microphone for a curtain call, I want to read a letter from Miss Ann Parker of New York. Miss Parker admits she's a Lux Radio Theater fan, but, well, here's her letter. For years, I've been a very ardent listener to your program, but when you advertised your product, I took it for granted you were giving it a boost, so to speak. Well, recently, having bought some rather dainty blouses, I bought a box of Lux plates. Believe me when I say you don't say enough about them. When it comes to studs and washing things beautifully, Lux goes to the head of the class. Thank you, Miss Parker. That's a mighty good tip for this winter, since women are wearing blouses more than ever, because, of course, they're wearing suits more often. It's the smart way to keep comfortable while you're saving fuel. You can keep those blouses of yours fresh and pretty all winter by sudsing them in gentle Lux flakes. And remember those rich suds Miss Parker mentioned? It's true. Ounce for ounce, Lux gives more suds than any of the ten other leading soaps tested. Start your blouses on a Lux life today. Lux is so thrifty, you can wash over 80 blouses with just one big box. If your dealer is out of Lux today, try again. It's worth waiting for. Now here's Mr. DeMille with our star. It's curtain call time. Time to congratulate Pat O'Brien, Chester Morris, and Ruth Warwick on their thrilling performances tonight. Thanks, C.B. It's well to be back. Pat, I bet you acted like a seasoned trooper the very first performance you ever gave. Oh, you couldn't have been there, C.B. No, no, no. You're too young. <laughs> well, maybe it's just as well he missed it. <laughs> no, I, I smell a story. Don't tell me you had stage fright, Pat. No, just a little accident, C.B. I was playing the part of an angel in a school play. One of my wings got knocked off, and I stooped down to pick it up. The nightshirt I was wearing kind of ripped up the back. Don't look now, but I had to exit backwards. <laughs> if you uh, if you care to repeat that act sometime in the Lux Radio Theater, I'll guarantee you the biggest hand you've ever received. <laughs> that I would like to see. <laughs> well, there are all kinds of ways to get into the theater. How does it happen with you, Ruth? Well, I was mixed up with a turkey. Oh, if you mean a bad play, uh, that's also a quick way to get out of the theater. <laughs> no, I mean a real live turkey. I won a contest back home in Missouri, and the prize was a trip to New York. And one of my duties was to present a turkey to Mayor LaGuardia, because turkeys were our chief local product. Well, his honor was thrilled, no doubt. I'm afraid he may have been bored by the whole idea. I'll try giving anybody a turkey this year and see how bored they get. <laughs> <laughs> you can start with me, Ruth. Chester, how did you get in the theater? The hard way, C.B. I fought my way past the stage doorman. And if you don't believe it, look at that nose. <laughs> I've been looking at it all week. <laughs> <laughs> well, just to break the monotony, Mr. Mill, why not look ahead to next week and tell us what the play's going to be? I will with pleasure. Because I think it will be one of the highlights in the history of the Lux Radio Theater. Our play next week is the distinguished Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer screen hit, Mrs. Miniver. And our stars will be Greer Garson and Walter Pidgeon. They're the same stars you saw in the picture. The artists who made this drama live in the memories of all who saw it. We consider it a real honor to bring you Greer Garson and Walter Pidgeon in Mrs. Miniver next Monday night. Like everybody else, I'll be listening in, C.B. Good night. Good night. Good night, C.B. Good night. Good night. The Navy and you really came through. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're racking your brain over your Christmas shopping problems, I have a very simple answer. That answer is war bonds and stamps. Every bond or stamp you buy helps to speed the attack on the enemy and gives the owner a little nest egg for his own post-war planning. But besides that, buying bonds and stamps now will help to stop inflation. It takes money off the Christmas buying front and puts it on the fighting front. Won't you join me in giving war bonds and stamps for Christmas? Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night 
when the Lux Radio Theatre presents Rear Garson and Walter Pigeon in Mrs. Miniver. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Pat O'Brien and Ruth Warwick are currently appearing in the RKO production, The Iron Major. Chester Morris will soon be seen in the Paramount production, Tornado. Heard in tonight's play were Ed Emerson, Fred Mackay, Charles Seal, Norman Field, Leo Cleary, Cliff Clark, Paul McVeigh, Hal Gerard, Eddie Marr, Arthur Q. Bryan, Stanley Farrar, Robert Harris, Jack Mather, and Tyler McVeigh. Our music was conducted by Louis Silvers. In cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service, this program is broadcast by International Shortwave Radio to our fighting forces overseas. This is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear Greer Garson and Walter Pidgeon in Mrs. Miniver. Are you tired, nervous, and easy mark for colds? Maybe you're not getting enough vitamins and minerals from your food. Rely on VIMS in these days of food shortages. VIMS are scientifically designed